Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd. And originally I was gonna show you this fantastic Pokeball 3D print that I was gonna do on my Raze 3D printer. And it turned out to be the most epic print failure I've ever had. Oh, it's, it's terrible. So let's just, let's just get to it. Let's do this. Are you ready? Go. Ah, welcome back. So like I said, originally I had this fantastic Pokeball print and it turned into a massive failure. And here's how it all, here's how it all, it all started. My friend Jen and her two boys were up not too long ago to help me celebrate with my birthday party. And I, they wanted me to 3D print something. So of course I'm gonna 3D print things and we, we found a model of a Pokeball. So I set it to print and then the whole group of us went off and did something and I, I came back and it was just a terrible, horrible mess. Thankfully, I was printing and filming with my GoPro in a time lapse so you get to see it. Oh, it's, it's so good. Okay, are you ready? Time lapse. <laughs> Oh, man, wasn't that just terrible? Oh, that was so terrible. Uh, so here's what happened. On the Raze 3D N2 Plus printer that I'm running, it's got, it's a, it's a straight path all the way, the filament down to the nozzle. Uh, the, the throat tube has some metal fins on it and it has a fan that blows across the fins to sink the heat away. That way the filament, as it's going through the all metal hot end, doesn't, uh, doesn't expand in the throat tube and it just, it hits the heater block and then, ex and then extrudes and it, out the nozzle. It's great. That's, that's how it works. That's how the uh, E3D nozzles work. That's how, that's how this nozzle works. The problem was in that giant mess of filament, a small piece of it got stuck in the fan blades of the, the fan that blows across the, the metal fins on the, on the throat. So uh, there was no sinking away of the heat. There was no break in the heat. Filament got warmed up in the, in the throat and then uh, expanded and it just clogged like the dickens. So uh, knowing that, it was time for me to fix it. And I thought, well, sure, I could clear this. Let's take it apart. Here I am. And I'm taking the fan off. That's awesome. The fan came off pretty easily and I just had to unscrew it. So now this is the, the throat and the heater block and the nozzle and you have to undo these little grub screws. And the, the problem was there was plastic holding it on so I preheated it and then once it was preheated I was able to scrape off all of this offending plastic. Darn it. I used the chisel and I used some grips because it was hot. It was really hot. Once I got the plastic off, well, oh, wait, there's more plastic. Ugh, God, plastic everywhere. Once I got the plastic off, I was able to grip the heater block and then slide out the, the heater core and the thermistor and yay, we're happy there. And now I can unscrew the throat from the actual heater block and it's coming out super easy which lends to my suspicion that yes in fact I am correct the filament did get clogged in the throat oh my goodness look at that it is just terrible well okay so we got it apart and I had my beautiful wife help me by applying flame to the throat and then I heated up the, the poker stick and I, I got the filament out Great, we've unjammed 
the clog. Now it's just a matter of putting it back together. And this is why, oh, I need to warn you, this is why you shouldn't do things to your printer when it's late and you're tired and you're not properly caffeinated because that's when this happened. Yeah, I broke it. Oh, I broke it. <laughs> so the throat tube itself has some threads on the end that that screw into the heater block and I turned it just a little too hard and it went snap. Oh, oh. <laughs> what I, ugh. anyway, so it's broken. So I get on the line to raise 3D and I talk to my people there and I'm like, you guys, uh, I'm stupid. I'm so, so stupid. And I broke it. Please help me. Oh, and so again, it was late at night. So they had to wait until the morning to check to see whether a hot end assembly was available to send out to me. And that's, uh, it was, it sucked. So when I have lots of other printers, but it just, it sucks because this was my own stupid fault. Please don't, don't do this yourself. Please get a proper amount of sleep. Please be properly caffeinated and, and please don't do light operations when you're not uh, able to brain correctly. I must say, the folks at Raise 3 d that I've been dealing with are fantastic. And I need to give a big, big shout out to Tammy, Michael, and Levi out of the Santa Clara office because after I went to sleep that night and woke up in the next morning, I said, hey, what's the status? Did you guys find out if there's a hot end assembly? They said, yes, and it's already on its way to you. Yes, yes. And it arrived. It arrived. So it was time to put it all back together. Ah, oh, look at that. Here I am. This looks familiar. I've got the Allen wrench and I'm setting the grub screws and just making sure that the heater core and the thermistor are in good. And then it's a perfect fit. So I had to kind of adjust it a little bit. And then I got everything from the hot end assembly back in. Now it was time to put the fan back on. And you bet I checked three times to make sure it was in the correct orientation. Once the fan was back in, I was able to heat it up. And look at that. Filament is extruding. I am excited. Well, the filament was coming out of it just fine, so it was time to do a test. And thankfully, I have this awesome little Maker Coin model that Angus over at Maker's Muse made me. And I still had the Orb Polymer PLA loaded into the printer. Uh, so I, I started printing it. And if you look over here, yeah, look over here. It's printing. It was printing just fine. It worked extremely well. Leveling the nozzles was, was super simple and uh, it, just, it just worked. In fact, the print is done and here it is. This is what it looks like. This is the little maker coin. Not too shabby, right? Of course, one of the things I did on the raised printer is print this one, this big one. So I've got, I've got a big maker coin, and I've got the small maker coin. And I'm gonna be printing a whole bunch of these small ones because I've got an appearance at the Portland Mini Maker Fair coming up. And of course, I'm gonna be at the New York Maker Fair first part of October. So I'm hoping to have a bunch of these 3D printing nerd coins to give out. Angus said he printed out a bunch of his Maker's Muse coins and gave them out at his local Maker Fair. I figured I should do the same. All right, the printer's working. We've successfully come back from the dead and we've repaired the printer and it, it works gloriously well. I'm, I'm continually impressed with this Raise 3D N2 Plus. So in hindsight, I have to look back on this because it was my own stupidity that caused this issue. Thankfully, the people at Raise 3D are awfully kind and had an extra hot end assembly to send me. But looking back, uh, I could have done things differently. Uh, instead, of, instead of taking it all apart, maybe I could have just pulled the fan, heated it up to 240, let the heat creep up, and then possibly got the clog out. Um, that's always a possibility. Uh, when reassembling the the hot end, uh, I, could, I could take the nozzle off, put the throat tube in first, and then tighten down the nozzle against that. That's probably a better idea. Um, shoot, I don't know. I, it, this is one of those things, right? Because when you're printing, uh, and it's for an extended period of time, you can't just sit there and look at your printer. In fact, it's right there, and I can't just stare at it the whole time. I just can't stare at it. So it, it's just one of those things. It broke loose. What I could do... Here's what I could have done. I could print uh, with a raft because then it provides a nice sticky surface when it's uh, heated uh, to, to put all the supports on because the main failure was with 
the supports that it was printing, right? The, the supports broke free and that's what started carrying around and creating that gigantic mess. But regardless, that's all behind us. There are things I could have done differently, sure, but uh, I learned a lot and now I can recommend don't fix your printer when you cannot brain correctly. Well, that's it. Thanks for coming along on this fun journey and fixing my printer and uh, admitting to my stupidity. As a, as a big thanks, Raise3D wanted me to let you know that they will give 5% off any order from their website for the next five days if you use the code high five. I think that's pretty cool, right? If, if you're in the market for a Raise3D printer or some of their filament, then use the code and you'll save 5%. Makes sense. High five. 5%. That's only for the next five days. <laughs> five days. Uh, so don't, uh, don't delay. This is a cool opportunity. Hey, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up if uh, I did a good job. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about anything you saw in this video. A big thanks and thumbs up to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Without their financial support, things like this just wouldn't be the same. And so my eternal gratitude is with them. Hey, don't forget, hug each other more often. I love you guys. As always, high five.